Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and this little jig is great for changing the bearings on your router bits. Sometimes I struggle to hold a router bit while I change the bearing. I used to leave it in the router table so the router itself could hold it, but if you drop one of those tiny parts, it's probably going to go inside the router's vent holes, and you definitely don't want that. So I made this little spring-loaded jig that I saw in a magazine a few years back. Today, I'll show you how I made it. So let's get started. I began with a four and a half inch by three and a quarter inch piece of three quarter inch hardwood. I drew a one inch long line, one inch from the end, then another line perpendicular to that one, one inch from the long edge. I laid out a third line, three quarters of an inch from the first line, then a final line connecting the two, one quarter inch from the top edge. On the end, I marked a point three quarters of an inch from the top edge and centered it on the end grain. I'm going to bore a hole there, and since it's end grain, it's helpful to use an awl to create a dimple so the bit won't wander as you start drilling. Make sure your drill bit is perpendicular to your drill press table, and use a clamp to hold the workpiece while you bore a 5 16 inch hole an inch and a half deep. Now you'll have to cut away the waste areas we laid out earlier. A bandsaw is a good tool for this, but you could use a handsaw if you like. Just try to make your cuts nice and straight so you don't have to do a lot of sanding when you're finished. As you cut the long line, stay on the side of the line furthest from the edge of the block and save that three quarter inch cube you cut away. That's going to have a hole near its edge, which is why it was important to cut on the right side of that line earlier because you didn't want to accidentally cut into your hole. You'll need a bit of a point on that cube. I use an adjustable wrench to hold it while keeping my fingers safe. Just don't cut into your wrench. Find the center of the notch that you cut in the larger block. Then mark two points on that line, one a half an inch from the end, and the other an inch and an eighth from the end. Now back to the drill press. At the point furthest from the end, bore a half inch hole an inch and a half deep. At the other point, bore a 3 16 inch hole three quarters of an inch deep. At the bench, glue a three inch long piece of 5 16 dowel into the hole in that little cube. On the main block, use a file in the half inch hole so that your rudder bit will slide in and out easily without getting stuck. Once the glue's dry, slip a spring over the dowel. I used a half inch by inch and three quarter compression spring. You can get these in hardware stores. Slip the dowel in the hole on the block, then slip an inch and a half long piece of 3 16 dowel in the small hole on the edge. This little pin keeps the whole thing together and it'll give you some extra support for larger bits. That's it for this jig. To use it, you simply slide the spring-loaded mechanism back as you insert your router bit in the hole. The point on the cube fits between the cutters, holding your router bit as you loosen the set screw that holds the bearing in place. I leave my bit in the jig while I swap the bearing and tighten the new one in place. That way if I drop my parts, they'll land on the workbench or on top of the router table where they're easier to retrieve. This is the first version I made. If I had it to do again, I think I would have made that dowel an inch or so longer so you could pull on it to retract the spring. So maybe you'd want to make that modification on yours. By the way, I know some of you are going to ask about the router bearings. These are the ones I use. My favorites are made by Whiteside. In fact, mine are part of a rabbiting bit set, but you can also buy the bearings separately. I also have a set from Wood River, which is nice because it includes other things like stop collars and extra screws and even some lubricant. However, I don't think the bearings themselves are quite as nice as the white side ones. They just don't feel as smooth. But, I don't know, maybe that's just a matter of opinion. I'll put links to both sets and some other options in the notes below this video. Router bearing sets are really handy to have so that you can change the way a bit cuts. So, you should check them out. And check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always full of great tips, tricks, and tutorials to help make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Happy bearings!